Hello, long time no vid. Let me first give you an update. Last time, I talked about how we saw magic smoke from here. Turned out it was it was indeed a short. Um, upon diagnosis, this wasn't all the way down. It was most of the way down, and eventually, I guess it jiggled free and got just uh, loose enough to cause a short. I talked to the builder and he didn't have another one of these clasps and apparently they only come with the spindle. So I reasoned that if two of them had shorted and there are four total and I only need three, let's take the two that are shorted, consider them as one, even if they're not really, and rewire it. So I opened this up and soldered and shrink wrapped and everything um, to the three better looking leads. Did the associated thing on this side. Um, and that works because this is a, a three phase spindle. So it just needs three leads. Didn't make this cord a little bit shorter, but the end result was that same day. Uh, excuse me as I make sure this is very down. There we go. <clears throat> as it works great. A little bit tighter here but i didn't want to undo all this stuff all the way down etc haven't had an issue with this since so that's good um so total cost was a couple days of frustration and a little shrink wrap and a little solder not too shabby today we're gonna make a little dinosaur a little dinosaur Probably about, oh, yay tall, this is a parasaurolophus. My daughter is a little bit sick as I am, so you may hear coughing in the background. I've already synced it up. I've measured uh, the thickness of the material without the protective wrap on it, the thickness of the material with the protective wrap. I've already queued it up to zero, exactly point, in this case, 0.124 inches uh, above the table and I want my depth of cut to be 0.124 inches so that should mean I should be able to cut the entirety of the material without touching the table um, because there actually is a little tiny tiny bit of um, double-sided tape holding this down this particular cut is going to take about six and a half inches off of this is a uh, abrasion resistant uh, polycarbonate interestingly Bayer does this I said a bear is aspirin but I guess they do more stuff so I've already queued it up um, I'll show you what it looks like here at the computer we'll do a simulate run here's my little G viewer so this is the tool path it's going to make. Um, you see all the little dinosaur bones here, and I also have a straight line going across the material completely so that I can basically cut it off and make it easier to deal with when I make the next one. Let me help my daughter one second. Okay, we're back. It's all queued up. Uh, I've already zeroed everything in. This is about six inches off of the surface right now. And it occurs to me that I think something moved. All right, let's go to the process of zeroing. Um, I'll show you exactly how I set up the material. First, a nice handy dandy addition to my machine, this game controller. I can't tell you how valuable, well, I will tell you, this is pretty valuable. Here's why. Oops, turn it on. So, let me get both in the shot. Also, I can go slow. Make cool music. Uh, one other thing I use for this process is a little flashlight, which happens to be these really 
cool and not very expensive safety glasses which I will be wearing as soon as the everything starts but for now I use them to make shadows okay first thing I'm going to do is go down and I want to zero on the X so, so the shadow really doesn't help or I guess right now it's just distracting. Um, so I want to line this up get pretty close and then this is hard to do with one hand so forgive me hmm can I do it with one okay here's my attempt to attempting to do this with one hand the goal here is to line this up directly on the Y. See that we're pretty close. Uh, I want the bit to be right in the middle. And that would be my zero point. That's pretty good. <clears throat> That'll claim that X right now is at zero. Okay. And then I do the same thing with Y. And honestly, that's pretty close. And I don't need to be exactly on because the pattern I have is starting at uh, 0.2 inches in. So why I'm zeroing here. Now as for Z, this is where the flashlight comes in, or the shadow comes in. And the way I have chosen to do this is I want to, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, hold the phone. I want to bring this down ever so slowly. until the shadow almost touches there we go touches the actual bit that will mean if, if I call this zero or if I call this negative the depth I'm gonna cut then I'm not gonna touch the table and I'm still gonna get through all the material you might be able to see a slight gap under there see it moving <clears throat> the material moving up and down this is because of the double-sided tape. So I should be able to cut through all this, cut into the tape somewhat, and not touch the table. Uh, so anyway, this is Z at zero. Let me set that now. Actually, I, I should say this is Z at negative 0.124. Eight point one two four. Great. Let's make Z go up. Now I'm basically ready to start my cut. Let me sh make sure my daughter is okay with this, and we'll start. New paper. My daughter's painting. New paper. Check. Just a second. Okay. Safety glasses on little safety glasses on we're only cutting uh, polycarbonate here so should be no issue plus she's usually facing away and we will start I still need to adjust the dwell times or the the amount of time that it takes to start the spindles right now I just walk through the code until the spindle starts this is a 16th inch bit and after this happens I just push go I have it doing three passes uh, for every shape. So it'll do three, three of the exact same shape, shapes at uh, lower depths. And then I'll be able to clean up and 
Let's see how we did. I'll check back in a little later. We're only a few minutes into this, but I wanted to show you a thing. See, with the uh, detritus here, there's clumps of it. This is a sign that I'm actually getting into the double-sided tape. This is uh, good because I know that I'm cutting all the way through the material. If I wasn't getting any clumps, I've learned, that means that there's probably just a sliver, smaller than I can do, of material left. Yep, we're all done, Sarah. Maybe I'm sick of them on the end of her bit there. Usually doesn't interfere with the uh, the final service quality. Because I'm reasonably confident that we cut all the way through. Oh, this is a good sign. We can start pulling it up. Okay, anything still left in there? Nope. This is gray polycarbonate. Yeah, you can take them off now. Good job, sir. All right, let's start peeling it up. I'm cleaning them off the pieces, and hopefully that's all there is. This piece should be set up for next time. In case you're curious of where I got it and what the part number is. Focus. Actually, I don't see part number on there, but uh, you can see the description. I'll be right back when I uh, clean up some of the stuff. All right, here's the first step of cleanup. Lots of little plastic bits on there okay sir yeah okay that's fine that sounds good one of the problems of using double-sided tape is that some invariably gets on the part and it makes it a little sticky on the edges so you can focus focus there we go or it's just kind of sticky. Guan works great to get that off, but the problem is it's a part of a process. Oh, you're leaving the door open for me? Thank you, sir. I do want to point out a couple of things I noticed about this particular run. See how I actually cut through the plastic and cut through the, the resultant um, protectant um, layer uh, but haven't cut through double-sided tape that's good for a couple of reasons one it means that I'm not cutting into the table two it means that all this extra stickum that could be on the side of the parts is not so I pretty much calculated Z being negative 0.124 exactly right I'm happy about that also makes cleanup a bunch easier which is good. Okay, next step. I'll blow this off with an air gun and then I'll take an old toothbrush and some Goo Gone. Clean up the edges. And here is the end result. After some scrubbing down with an old toothbrush and goo gone and then trying to get the goo gone off which is kind of a pain in the butt um, soap and water doesn't exactly work but it ev evaporates after a little bit so soap and water for me hot water and then drying them off paper towels and shoving them all together and you get this I measured it out just right scaled the parts just right so they fit together with material thickness, step in the hole. Um, turned out pretty well. 
This again is uh, abrasion resistant polycarbonate. Um, I think if I was going to proctize this, it would be in one of my final cuts because it's kind of slick, shiny, and well, it's kind of unique looking, kind of see through. This is a Onsrud 16th of an inch single fluted end mill. I only found them for, I guess I get them on Amazon now, but I think it's 33 bucks a pop. And let me just tell you, they break really easy. N not while you're cutting. They break really easy while you accidentally bump into them. Um, I've broken, I think, four or five of them now. For example, I have a big brush and I'm brushing off the surface. Dink, done. Um, or I'm actually tightening it up with the wrench Pulling it here, pulling it here, wrench slips, kink, done. One time I had it crash into the table, which is here. My X and Y wasn't where I thought they were. And so I said, go to zero. And it went to zero, which was below the table. And just bumped it off. There's a couple other instances. I really like the bit, but I really like it when they don't break too. So you got to be careful. Other than that, this was an experience cutting a polycarbonate dinosaur by CNC. Thanks guys, see you next time.